Everybody, welcome back to another Adobe Live here on Behance.net slash Adobe Live. And just for your info, if you're watching us on YouTube, that's just fine. But where you really should be is exactly where I just said, Behance.net slash Adobe Live, because that way you can get involved in the chat and the community. And today we are joined by Klaus Javinsky. How are you doing, Klaus? Guten Tag. That is me. Guten Tag. Uh, Thank you. Well, it's Makalik uh, from uh, from Amsterdam, and now everybody, right. everybody <laughs> in the Netherlands is going to facepalm. <clears throat> You're right. That's Tim. Tim tinkering with me and saying it German. Yeah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> anyway, hello, mate. Hello. It's good to see you. Good to have you back. How are you doing? Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm coping quite well with the with the lockdown. Uh, my hair is not, but everything else is is, is mighty fine. I'm pretty busy, so. Um, so that's that's cool, but on the other hand, it's nice to relax and uh, just spend yeah. uh, spend ninety minutes with you and just talk about stuff and draw a little. No, it's going to be loads of fun, loads of fun. Well, as usual, we're joined by our fabulous community. So let's give a shout out to some of those. Uh, at the top of my screen here, I've got Andreas, who definitely is German. Guten Tag, Andreas. Uh, we've got Catherine. We've got Tim. Who's he? Tim. That's familiar and <laughs> we've got oliver here we've got sandrine we've got kirsty hepworth here of course and sean kosel uh also good guten tag uh sean oh good morgan sorry but no definitely tag right now um so yeah all of these lovely people i think i saw angus in there a little while ago and a few others but great to see you everybody don't forget five questions into the chat and uh, we'll put them to klaus as and when we can so Masterclass time, Klaus. Um, yeah, I mean, questions are very much appreciated. So, so if you have yeah. anything on your heart, um, tell me what your problem is with sketching multiple characters into one shot. Um, yep. We all struggle with uh, different things. So uh, that yep. will be interesting to, to hear that. Also, we have 90 minutes uh, in which I can make a complete illustration, a complete sketch, whatever that is. Yep. Uh, maybe maybe very complete by storyboarder standards, yeah. very um, unrefined by illustration standards. Um, and uh, but but that's that's the joy of creating art, right? It's, it's yeah, yeah. different styles, and uh, uh, something works works for this subject matter and for this audience, and something works very well for th this subject matter and this audience. And sometimes photorealism is really great, and sometimes having it drawn by a real human being and seeing that there was a, a real pencil on real paper or a real watercolors, that gives you a certain impression. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, so that is, that is awesome. I don't know. Do you guys can, you guys can sh see my screen already. Uh, I think Tim's just switching over now. So there we are. We're down in the corner. Your screen is there and ready to go. So Angus yeah, yeah. is here, by the way. Hi Angus. Yeah. I just opened a uh, Photoshop document here uh, for myself and I put a, yep. put a, gray uh, tone in there so it's not as glaring white and also it yep. will enable me when I storyboard to to much faster create highlights literally yep. high lights white boom put it in there and you have a focus point um, if you do this on white you have to render everything in gray and then the white yep. will stick out so that's we'll exactly what I do neutral gray start off with because that way you can go to either side of it and you're not you're making better decisions I think that's um, yeah that's uh, that's exactly right. Um, that's how the pros do it. And uh, yeah, talk about mistakes. Yeah, this is something I uh, in, in my classes, whenever I whenever I teach, whenever I talk about art, um, I talk about mistakes and this is not something you should do. And I make strong statements about like, this is right. And if you do this, you failed stuff like this. So don't 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 sweat that. Um, yeah, it's just like the way I am. And it's the way I learn. I need to be uh, uh, punished a little bit here and there to go in the right direction. And the answer, because this is art, is always in the gray zone. It's always awaiting 
uh, of pros and cons of going more this direction or more that direction, or intentionally being ambiguous about what you're telling to the people. Um, yeah. In my line of work, ambiguous, being ambiguous, uh, not being clear about what is happening is not good because mostly there's something like a script and uh, the script makes statements and I should illustrate those statements and make them really come to light and bring out the best in them and make the strongest statement there is. Yeah. So it's really important um, to do this, uh, to, to pick a side really um, and, yeah. and make, make a strong statement. Um, talk about strong statements. Um, Drawing characters is hard. Drawing yeah. people is hard. Um, drawing one person is hard. Drawing one dynamic person is hard. Drawing two is harder. Drawing five of them, that's where we're in business. That's where yeah. things get complicated. Um, and um, there are people think, who have, yes. I was just gonna say, do you, do you think that really what a lot of the, a, a lot of people's problems with drawing, great mug by the way, um, Shame it hasn't got like a ring of gold stars around it. Personally, you're thinking, but there you go. <laughs> uh, no, this is this is a historic uh, docu. Um, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, it is Artifact. now. It is now. There's always a couple of lines missing there. Somebody's. Oh, somebody would be very what? cross. What? It's 20 <laughs> years old, man. Isn't it from '98 from the Loughborough Steam and Vintage Fair? I bought it Loughborough. for one quid. Oh yeah, I remember that from last time. No, my question. My question was: Do you think that a lot of people's problems with drawing multiple characters? Is is it would be resolved by a little bit more study of, of of vanishing points and perspective and understanding that characters of the same height, you know, have uh, are all are all basically on the same vanishing plane. You know, they it doesn't matter how they all they are all at that level. Um, that is indeed something that is very good if you understand that and if you can right. do this. And when we talk about drawing crowds, there are multiple ways of of understanding the subject matter. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm tackling today, I'm just tackling one of those. So another one we're not gonna tackle today is like, what if I have like 15 characters and they're all in a perspective environment that is getting, you know, and they're, they're, they're being big and then they're, they're, getting, they're getting smaller, going, going, yeah. going to the distance. And how do I create focus there? What is the be best technique to duplicate these characters so I don't have to draw every, every single character, you know, and uh, like there's a, I don't know, a big uh, group of people marching towards something, you know, and they have they have signs or something. So th this this um, this is one part of tackling this. But but this personally is not what I love doing. I don't no, know who does don't that. Know anybody that does. <laughs> there there are people who probably do, and there there are yeah. people who just like love losing themselves in little details. So they draw like a, mm. a a face down here, looking looking away from us, the back of the head, and then like drawing the neck, and then they like to draw hair on top of that. And then they're done after like, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes with this character, and then they can go to the second one, and it's only 125 to go. Um, so it's not very attractive to me, uh, but for some people it's awesome like this. There are people um, like Geoff Darrow, for example, that's a, that's a comic book artist. He's phenomenal. Um, yeah. And he draws detail quantity and quality. He will, he will draw pictures that are full of a million things, a street full of dirt and people and signs and lampposts and, and everything, but it's, uh, it's very full. So if, if those pages are sometimes not colored, you, you cannot actually see what's going on because we're lacking focus. And this is one of the, the key points for today for, for drawing groups in any, in normally any environment, it's, it's, it's about depth and it's about focus. Yeah. Um, in here, if we have a large group scene like this, the intention is not a focus. The intention is showing like these are millions of people. It's a never ending stream. It's like Hell's Deep, the big attack in Lord of the Rings, you know, all the, the goblins and the orcs are attacking. Um, and, and the idea is to, to just show like it's a huge crowd moving, but not actually really telling a story with that picture apart from mm. a larger context. So I'm, 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 I'm taking this out. So this is, this is not what I'm interested in. Um, I'm, I'm interested in, in, in scenes that are st stronger on storytelling that put that way. It's an abstract term storytelling. What does it actually mean? I'm gonna, dive into it today a little bit as well. So I brought you something here and I hope it's okay that I use this. Um, it's not from me, it's not by me. Um, this is an, an older piece done by... Yeah, that, that looks well and truly out of copyright, so we're good. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not sure it is. It looks because um, uh, this is this is from the, the 2000s, I think, actually. Yeah. 
Um, oh. So I'm using it just as an example here. This is Gary Gianni. Gary Gianni is a US illustrator. Is it okay if I talk on this stuff or should I switch to something that I've drawn? Yeah, no, 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 it's perfectly all right. Actually, now I can see it in big. I couldn't see it in big before. I had a tiny thumbnail to look at, so. But yeah, no, 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 of course it is. Okay, cool. Perfectly um, all right. Let me, let me see if I can. Um, and we've got uh, Melanie Divide here as well from, uh, from of course, the German streams. Oh, Everybody loves Melanie. Hi, Melanie. She, she is amazing. She I, is. I, at some point, I want to have a live stream with her as well. I mean, you're super charming, Tony, but, you know, Melanie. <laughs> I'm no <laughs> Melanie Divide, mate. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get back to the subject matter. So we have a piece about Gary Gianni. He's a US illustrator. Uh, he drew Prince Valiant for a time. And if you're oh, an old yeah, person yeah. like I am, then you know Prince Valiant from back in the yeah. day. The Adventure Strips uh, by uh, Hal Foster, and then taken over by John Cullen Murphy, and then taken over by Gary Gianni, and then taken over by uh, Thomas Yates. Thomas Yates, also amazing illustrator. Um, it's a, one of the most publicated strips. Anyway, so this is a Conan piece. Um, and and I remember the sketch, seeing the sketch for this piece uh, in a little booklet that I don't have here right now in Amsterdam. It's still in Germany. Um, yeah. That uh, and it explains something about drawing crowds and uh, arranging them on, on on the paper. And 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 what was the interesting point in this one here is the the grouping aspect of drawing crowds. You don't just fill your screen or your paper with like a million little things um, all over the place, but what you do is you, 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 you focus them and you group them together. For example, in this, uh, in this piece, um, the, the, the group of attackers, wow, my computer is super slow. Like what's going on here? This is, this is not right. This is far You're getting this a bit of not... lag. Wow, oh, where does the lag right. come from? It cannot be, um, Maybe I have to restart Photoshop. I have to, have to look into it in a second. But so Stuart the, Fickling in the chat, by the way. Sorry to interrupt your flow there, but Stuart Fickling has just made a very, very amusing thing for the Brits who are in the chat, uh, saying that this scene illustrates uh, Asda for the last toilet roll back in March last year, <laughs> which is really good. Um, yes, absolutely. It's it's a big battle for the last toilet roll. Yeah. And Conan has it. Um, I should actually stop this right here because this is this lag is really confusing. Really me. bad. Yeah, that's um, okay. Re restart it if you need if needs be. Um, I'm I'm gonna. But that's yeah. that's it's my normal. I mean, like if I'm. Oh, yeah. But here it's also lagging. And okay. it shouldn't be. It, it it definitely should not be lagging. I mean, uh, well, you know, it's ones and zeros, right? So it might, you know, th those things do happen. But you know, I, it's okay. yeah. take a minute if you want to do that. If, while you're yeah. doing that, I can have a quick scan through the chat. Oh well, yeah, um, do that, please. Maybe if you like. So the uh, oh, so Jackie's here. Jackie Morvar's here. Hi, Jackie. Let's see if there's any questions. Um, people love your drawing ability, Klaus. You know, they really do. It's very good. G give me, give me a second to reopen Photoshop here. Yeah, no worries at all, mate. Nothing at all. We've got plenty of time. I'm um, going to show some drawings of mine, like some older drawings of mine, because the recent material yeah. I all, all cannot share because I worked on this computer game. So, yeah. Um, let me see if things are back to normal now, and then we can. Oh wow. This. I need to restart my computer. I mean, like, this is this has happened recently um, for the first time. I don't I don't get this. There there does appear to be the odd thing going going a bit strange at the moment in a in a couple of. I don't have. Oh wait 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 wait! wait I got it! I got, got it. it! Yes, yep. For some reason, um, smoothing was on a hundred percent. Ah. Right, okay, so of course it needed time to calculate that. Right, okay, there yes. we are. Yes, yeah. it did. If you smooth that much, even Photoshop with a good computer will uh, will buckle at some point. It will, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's um let's go back to that to that image. Um so that coming, yeah. Oh man, so it's so nice to fix a problem, you know, like like this. Um but that's um, great. I mean, because the thing is you fix that there. What you've done, Klaus, is you've shown people that even the real hardcore pros come across things sometimes and think, why is that happening? But you've just gone through a problem solving situation that was probably helped a lot of people out. 
I, I do hope so. Um, I'm sure it has. Okay, um, so the uh, the mass of, of little individual fighters here attacking Conan are all grouped into one big um, one big group, and that is really yeah. nice. That makes the the thing really easy to see. Also, we have a whole lot of um, edges in here that um, create the that, that point towards Conan. This guy, um, this here, this yep. here, right? This all goes this all goes toward towards Conan. We have this here, we have this here, basically. Yep. This here goes down into the mass, and then everybody is actually looking towards Conan, if you if you see this really closely, but except, except this guy, but he's not important. Um, everybody's basically looking into this direction. Only this guy is looking away. Why is he looking away? Because he's he's shouting to other people, like, attack him here, he's, he's behind the corner. So we have um, an element here that, uh, that um, addresses that the world beyond the frame of the picture is continued there. Um, and that is an important factor to take into account. Uh, we have to weigh the option of making this happen, like addressing that there's the world outside the frame. But at the same time, we need to focus all our attention to be inside the illustration. So yeah. we don't want to have characters that lead our eye or edges, for example, this is an edge here, this is a real edge. We don't want to have that edge lead us out of the picture, right? So if this edge like would just like go up there, and disappear, it might actually lead us out of the picture, but this guy will always lead us back in. And even there's a little interruption here. So if the eyes go up, go up here, it will still bring us back and then it will be going to be brought back down. Yeah. So uh, it's a it's a marvel, marvelous piece of piece of artwork um, and done in real media, no doubt. And uh, I met Gary Gianni at a San Diego Comic Con years ago, and uh, he just published Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, like an adaptation of that, in in illustrated form. And it's, it was just gorgeous. And just talking to him and getting a signed copy and stuff, and uh, learning about his Prince Valiant work uh, was just just amazing. The the level of quality and um, and, and research you have to do to do such a piece, like anatomy, posing, drapery, um, lighting, all that stuff is 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 pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, drawing do you crowds. go to um, yes. Do you go to Angoulême? I have never gone to Angoulême to France. No, to but I, I, I'm going to do it next time. People are allowed to go to Angoulême. <laughs> I um I normally go to Erlangen. Right. Erlangen is uh, the Angoulême of Germany, and it's every two years. Right. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll make sure I, you know, that when we can go back to things like that, I'll make sure that that's on my list as well. Yeah, dude, you, you should do this. We, we're going to hang out. Uh, it's going to yeah, be yeah, that would be fun. grand. Yeah, it would be so cool. Um, yeah. and um, this year, I mean, 2020, indeed, Erlangen was cancelled. So now yeah. it's every four years. So there will be people I only see in Erlangen, and I'll I'll just see them again in next year yeah. um, so so when i started um started out drawing this is a really old piece of mine and i've, I've used this for multiple um explanations about about drawing stuff you can barely see what this is like if you watch this on a cell phone this video you'll go like i, I cannot see anything going on there. what the heck is this if you're watching on a big uh, 4k monitor you will be able to see better what's going on there it's like um two two uh, figures uh, two humanoid figures. One, one is. Oopsie, that's a, that's a black and white image. Mode. That that is to to RGB. And so we have we have Iron Man here, yep. and Iron Man is lifting a car. It's out of frame because the car is not important really. That's kind of kind of smart. And yeah, the other one. You've got enough information there, haven't you, to tell you it's a car? You've got just enough of the chassis and the front wheel to. Yes. Um, and, and the other one is called Brass. That was a hero from uh, um, from Richard Bennett, drawn by Richard Bennett back in the day. He's now also a storyboard artist. He, he's leading the way, an amazing detail freak. So it's a guy with a giant giant gun here. And then that's a leg. That's another leg. That's a leg back here. Um, the, the problem with all this stuff is that I've drawn in here is that it distracts from what is actually going on. The only focus we really have in this in this picture is where there's nothing. This is the interesting part of the picture. So that is not really smart how I arranged the amount of detail on this on this page. Um, I have I've drawn in see that in the back here you see 
trucks being shot and tanks and there's police officer here, like the tiniest detail. And those are not really of interest. Of interest. You should stop illustrating detail where it doesn't matter. And yeah. I will try to adhere to these principles that I'm explaining right now when I'm doing my drawing starting in five minutes. Yeah. I, I, I refer to that as internal complexity when I'm when I'm talking about things like that. Is too much internal complexity. You lose the focus that way. Have you I think and that's a term from photography, I think. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a photographer, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting more enamored with it in my, in my old mm -hmm. age now, being over 40 and, and illustrating. And also seeing that a lot of professional uh, concept artists and matte painters and matte painters, especially and illustrators, come from photography. Yeah. And they learn their skills there. And that is just invaluable. So if you're 15, if you're 20, and you're not really caring about photography with your phone, start caring now. Yeah, yeah, it's a good training. idea because you looking through that single lens, which of course in the world that we we work in is pretty much what we do, right? We we have to we can't you know we can't go for extreme extremes in in a lot of cases, so we have to learn to see like a camera. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and we perceive the world through the camera, and that is that is fine. And that's a yeah. for example for me that's that's a challenge. Like when if you see me, for example, on. <laughs> On LinkedIn or on some social media platforms, like I will just post pictures that I take in Amsterdam because it's gorgeous and uh, yeah. and it resonates with people and, and it, it opens my world and it's I just like it. So, um, but let's get back into the drawing part. So this is an old pencil illustration I did for the Rheinruhe Megaplex, a German uh, addition um, to the Shadowrun um, line of pen and paper role playing game books, which is like a fantasy world uh, cyberpunk plus elves and dwarves and trolls and all that stuff. So those are uh, soccer fans. So those, well, those are soccer fans battling and there's a whole lot of characters in there, right? a multi-character shot, but still you can quickly see what is going on. And there's a, a easily discernible focus in this, in this illustration. So we, we focus on this guy here, on the troll, the biggest yep. guy. And um, and there's a dwarf here coming with a with a trash container, and he's 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 gonna throw it down there on on the guy. Everybody, everybody's fighting. Both um, the soccer clubs are are in a melee here. Um, so what you notice here, for example, is or what I, what's one thing that I want to draw your focus on is is not really the perspective aspect of that. Of like, oh yeah, yeah, that's perfect perspective because we can't actually see that. People might be yeah. jumping, some people are closer to the ground, some people are taller, higher, um, and, and smaller. And, and so that's all, all really difficult. There's a little bit of perspective in there because you see this lamppost here with a, with a camera on top and stuff. But this lamppost actually might be falling, so we don't know this either, or it might just be pushed by somebody. So there's no real perspective in that, in there. Um, but what is more important is that we have a lot of overlap in the illustration because overlap is the biggest communicator of depth and we want depth in yeah. our illustrations. If we don't have depth, we basically just have uh, five things next to each other and we, we cannot say anything about them. Yeah. Um, one thing you will see in here is that drawing hands is important. Yeah. Um, for a lot of people, like it's like, let's hide the hands, let's hide as, as many hands as possible because drawing hands is hard. And, uh, and if you're an illustrator for comic books, for example, uh, or, or other storytelling, story intense things that features humans with hands uh, or humanoid creatures with hands, learn to draw hands. It's, it's really crucial. It's essential. Yeah. So let's, let's count the number of hands in here. So we have like uh, one in here, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five, we have six, we have seven, we have eight, we have nine. Those are hidden. I'm not even counting those, right? So there, there are nine hands in this picture. And how many characters do I have in this picture? Let's see this. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is basically the eighth, right? So I have at least one hand per character visible. And yeah. I'm just nice because I'm, I'm I'm not counting those hands because that's cheap. It's also yeah. realistic, but it's not not really yeah, yeah. actually diving into this stuff. 
but it shows everyone as a participant. Stuart's asking, um, do you use resource photos um, to get that punch action or is it just from knowing the human form and movement and lots of practice or is it a co- is it a combination of both things there, there is a you're going right there where it hurts good question um uh, <laughs> yeah i should be using reference for that if this was a picture that i would have to actually take to a more realistic uh painting style level yeah. then i would have to shoot my own reference for that to shoot the arm and good lighting so i have the highlights in the right spot but for the illustrations that i've been i've been doing in the past and all that i'm showing today from me they are all basically done without reference right. um, you should use it absolutely you have to get all those images into your brain at some point and it doesn't matter if it's like five years ago or if it's right now for this illustration it has to enter your brain at some point to get out of there um, but yes, uh, mastering anatomy to a certain degree that is believable is a crucial skill in all this. And there's no shortcut for it. No matter how many books you read, how many classes you take, it doesn't matter. You have to try it. You have to do it. You have yeah. to stand on the surfboard to learn surfing. No theory will ever uh, keep you from falling off the first time right. you stand on that thing because your body is not used. So um, yes, once you have not mastered, but uh, a good control of anatomy, um, a good proficiency in there, um, and you draw better than other people spot your mistakes, then you're good. Yep. With, with me, that, that is the case. Uh, my anatomy is not, absolutely not perfect. Um, who knows? I mean, I mean, like this upper body looks actually so good. I might've taken reference for that back then, like a photo, but I don't remember it. Normally I would never do it. I, and as a storyboard artist, you, you didn't have time for, for doing this. No. That's the thing, yeah. erudite, quick. Yeah, it has to be it has to be super quick. And today yeah. I, I will definitely make anatomy mistakes. And later on I'll be like, oh no, this this deltoid should like go differently from the back um, uh, back muscle there. And uh, so this this might happen. But as I'm just doing a sketch, it's a great way of saying, oh, this doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a sketch. Um, for beginning artists there who uh, who want to get into the industry, careful with it's just a sketch. Um, you get nailed down on that stuff by art directors. And I'm, so I'm talking to two audiences here. One is like, we just draw for fun. It's great. Let's draw something in Photoshop. And the other crowd I'm talking to is the, I want to be a professional artist. Uh, yeah. how, how do I make money with this? How do I survive in the world of art? I'm always talking to this crowd as well. So please yeah. forgive me for making these strong statements about the professional career. It's not necessary to enjoy drawing. You don't need to be a professional making most of your money with this stuff. Um, but yeah, if you say it's just a sketch, um, then it sounds like a, like an excuse for not doing something right. Um, so your sketch can be so good that it still communicates the, the right intention. Um, and sure, um, somebody could say like the color on this troll here is really bad. And then I'll be like, yeah, it's just a sketch. You know, it's, it doesn't have color. It doesn't have to be. Um, but yeah, so so this is a crowd shot I did some some years ago. That's a fun one. Here's a, a different one, and um, I wanted to just give some diversity. Um, so, I don't know, wait, maybe I can open this in Photoshop, actually. I'm just going to pull it over here, say OK, and open it in, in Photoshop. This was a different one. Um, this um, developed organically um, when I was drawing it, because I drew this on a train. This is an A4 size piece of paper drawn with pencil. Um, you can still see the first guiding lines that I did in here, like the really loose, tiny little lines um, that just like mistake lines. You see the, the hand here was like more like this. And then I like closed the fingers a bit more. Uh, so I went from this to like this. Um, and uh, um, this just developed naturally. And this is also maybe because a reason because this illustration is not perfect. It's, it's, it doesn't have the same quality as, as the other one. Um, let me see if I can, if I open it here, you can see it a little bit better because the contrasts are different uh, when, it, when I'm looking at it with this. Here you can see a nice focus because the girl in the middle, it's Kala, the queen of the Stone Age, published by Vice Life Comics, a friend of mine invented this character. It's a trope, like the, the jungle girl trope. Um, and she's fighting against evil uh, Stone Age men. Um, for me, this was like a composition 
trial there. It was uh, testing out my anatomy skills back then. That was 2014. That is six years ago. I remember I was on a train um, and it might have even been a train to Erlangen. <laughs> I don't know. Um, to the comics along there. You can see she's popping out a bit more because she's more white. All the, the rest is more grayish from, from the, the pencil in there. Uh, but if you actually open this in uh, the real scan without the, the crunching of colors that it in Photoshop, this is the original sketch. Yep. And now you notice a problem. The, the main focus doesn't pop out too much anymore. If I make mm -hmm. this illustration smaller, I can take this away. Make this illustration small. You can see, like, ah, oh, that, that she doesn't read anymore, really. Yeah. Not on, not on first glance, at least. Um, so, so that is a problem. We want our main element to read basically immediately, and then we want to go to the secondary and tertiary elements, and that is another big point. If you want to uh, take some notes today, is. Uh, when you tell a story with a picture, especially a complex one, you have to go from simple to complex. Yeah. And you have to go through individual story points. A complex illustration means this, the illustration, like the story you're telling, makes multiple statements in a sequence. And the sequence ideally is a deliberate sequence. You, you want to go A, B, C. You don't want to go A, B, C. That's not possible. It's all three at the same time. Doesn't work. Also, yeah. ACB doesn't sound good. Like there is a, there, there might be something lost there. You need all your animal elements to to read in a sequence, and this uh, image doesn't do that so well. But as I said, that this was not a planned illustration. Yeah. Um, Okay, I don't, I'm thinking if there's anything else. You can also see like the hands again, right? I was not hiding hands much. Like this guy in the back doesn't have a hand, but he has like two hands here, two hands here. This guy squeezed in one more hand. Uh, this guy, one hand, and the second one you can't see. Even, even this guy, like almost two hands. So drawing hands, uh, super important. And also super important, um, having uh, having outline control, having good control over your outlines. And you can see that in here and you will see it in the next picture I draw as well. Thicker outlines make a good read and that has to do with the rendering. And I will talk more about this while I'm drawing. But if That's you have cool. questions, just shoot. Uh, no, I, the, well, some people are saying about your, if you were drawing this on the train, what was that train journey like? <laughs> it was a long journey. It was a probably four hour journey and I, I, I it probably took me two hours to draw this. So yeah. I think they were alluding more to the fact that were you drawing it from the experience of the train journey? <laughs> but uh, if so, that was, that, that was super fun. But anyway. no, that was no, but no, uh, people, you know, I mean, the, uh, you, you've just illustrated perfectly there the importance that tone plays in actually creating it because the geometry of things is is one thing, but it's bringing those tones to a focal point as well, which is just as important in doing that. I was just wondering if you had any sort of mannequins. I have a hand mannequin uh, over where I draw over on that side there with all of the other um, mannequins and things. I just find that they're of limited, you know, unless they're a really good one, which that one actually isn't, um, the one that's over there, they're functionally useless because nothing that that we build has quite what we've got. Yeah, getting oh, getting the right reference is, is everything basically. Yeah. And especially for illustrators, like for example, what separates me from the big, the, the amazing illustrators yeah. that are out there on the, on the interwebs, like the, the real painters, for for those for all those games especially yeah. um, is that they have better reference than I do, and they shoot reference. So if your illustration isn't real enough, you haven't shot reference. You haven't shot your own reference. You haven't shot the exact right reference for yourself. You thought probably okay, I'm just going to shoot my arm here and it's fine like this. I'm just going to draw it in, but you haven't you haven't taken lighting into account. Or you haven't taken, yeah, the surrounding lightness or darkness of the environment into account. And you need to take all this into account to make it work. Shooting with the wrong lens, for example, can also be uh, com completely messing up your illustration. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's talk about more reference some, some, some other time. I have one more final piece before I actually get to start drawing. And this is an old one, an old favorite of mine 
from uh, from Rise Son of Rome. That was a game for uh, Xbox One, the launch title. Oh, wow, is our our stream uh, having technical difficulties, or is it just no? Me? We good. See that? Yes. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, then it's just like my internet upload Epic. or something. Um, so yeah, that was a comic book page, a double double page spread actually, with uh, Marius here, the hero, obviously, um, the Roman hero fighting against the barbarian hordes with his with his people, and that's a double page spread I did for the comics that were published basically in the game. If you play through the game, you can collect them, and then you can. Um, read more about the story of the characters in the Xbox One game. This was colored in Photoshop, but it, it was drawn. It was drawn in pencil. And here you can see the pencil drawing that I uh, just, I crunched the, the values in, in Photoshop. So this is the very first sketch I did. This sketch is actually, it's pretty good. It, it, it does a lot. It was drawn much smaller, but it shows the entire, um, composition of the piece and the main character pops out really nicely and you also have this 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 soldier here in the middle in the background looking back and connecting back with our hero and and the the villains basically are all grouped nicely in a curve around our hero so very cinematic very easy to read good stuff but then this happened so in this line work you have a little bit of a problem because it's, it, get, it just gets harder to read. This is really hard to read. There's very little depth read. Compare this with the depth read of this. That's basically the same illustration. But here we have used Photoshop and created a haze layer between yeah. two state, between the, how, how the characters are staged. And I mean that literally the word staged, like on a stage that you're watching a play unfold, you have people in the foreground, second tier and third tier. And in the back, they have different lighting. And in the front, they have different lighting and you have more focus. Um, so um, aerial perspective, lost? aerial perspective. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. So what is lost in this part of the, this step of the illustration is recovered in the color stage. So color mm -hmm. can save your picture and values and it can ruin your picture because if if this was illustrated differently and the same highlights like in the foreground were placed on the guy in the background because he's basically wearing the same armor then this picture wouldn't read anymore it wouldn't have a depth read and a lot of uh, comic book covers these days uh, done by colorists suffer from that um, yeah. They don't take the time from that because they don't get paid for it. If they got paid better, they would have more time and could bring in all their, their skills. But this way, they're just like, okay, I need to color this comic book cover in like five hours max. And then I've basically earned 10 bucks. Um, I love yeah. the palette in that, you know, because it, it, it I used to really like, um, well, I, I don't used to, I still do, like the paintings of uh, Delacroix and Jericho. And it's got a very, very... It, it, it is very, very, evo the colours in that are very, very evocative. And of course, that, that range of, of, of tone as well is. Yeah, and value is, um, yeah. and value is something that, that I want to talk about more mm. in, in, uh, when I'm drawing now, because I'll, I'll be drawing something in, in black and white. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is, this is all I had talked about crowds. And, and so those are some ideas that um, I'm, I'm bringing here into the, into the equation. So uh, let me quickly um, open open this one here. Oh, this still has like nonsense in there. I, I can just like remove this. Groovy nonsense, love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is this is stuff I was I was I was thinking about like what what are we gonna do today? And but I wanna I wanna run you through um, the illustration uh, from 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 start to finish, right? So I wanna start with with nothing really. Boom, and and um, one of the points that was um, that I was thinking about yesterday when I thought about like okay, what am I going to draw for you guys? Because I have a little head start here. You don't know what's going to happen. I already know basically compositionally what I want to do, but I haven't drawn this yet. Um, so it will still be new for me, and there might be a couple of curveballs on the way. And then I'll see how Ooh, cool. how I'll do for time because we only have an hour left. Yes, and, and we basically just started. Still an hour. An hour is good. And now is absolutely good. So um, when what I want to draw now is a, is, a, is a scene with one character defending himself against other characters. The other characters could be like 
zombies or bad people or just just humans in general that are more like a mass and that they don't take care of each other and they just have one goal so this is the idea i'm trying to communicate here the big one is one person is being attacked by multiple people that needs to be the first thing that this image reads and then i can see if i can i can make it better make it more interesting um let me let me sketch something <clears throat> so, so my core idea was, I mean, like we can, we can start with, um, with the rule of thirds. You all know this, right? So I could, I could just do like, just do the thirds here. And then I just do, do one character being here. And then I do other character around this. And this is, um, the problematic thing here is if we just, and I explained this last time we talked, if, if I just do them in a two dimensional way with a horizon here in the background, this is boring because everything is on the same line and everything is on the same size and it has the same importance. Mm -hmm. And if everything is, uh, has the same importance, it also has the same unimportance. Yeah. I am, um, I actually have a guide layout in Photoshop that I use for the rule of thirds that just comes in. I don't know if you've used that. So there's no, a no. function. Yeah. So in the view menu, you've got a thing called new guide layout in there and when you choose it what what you can do is you can set it up for three rows and three columns um with it at 30 percent, and that way it draws you and then you can just invoke it with a click or add it to an action ah oh, but it's uh it's 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 guides right so if i draw with it it will my drawing line will snap to it right uh, no 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 you don't you don't have to have it so it snaps and you can you can um but it's just it's just super useful well if you're moving things around they they might snap to it but you can always turn snapping off that's easy to do but i just have that in mind i find it useful mm, i should i should look into this this, this is yeah. this is I, i'm getting schooled now i'm getting i'm getting <laughs> Sorry, educated no. here as well this is so good <laughs> so for me there's new stuff as well this is why yeah. it's worthwhile to hang out with yeah. with the folks of adobe live yeah. so, um be it in germany or, or here in the uk and cheers i have to drink again drink some water um, Jana is asking, do you also use the golden ratio when you're calculating things? You... Um, it, um, I, I have, let's put it this way. I have no choice, but to, yeah. it's a little bit like, uh, do you evolve? Like I'm alive. I have to evolve. Evolution, uh, evolving is, is, is part of life. Right. So I, I, in a way have to use the golden ratio. Like the only way I cannot do it, if I do just do central, do something yeah. centric, do a character in the middle and do the other, other character uh nicely um put around him and have the the facial vector have the faces look into the one direction and then i'm doing super simple um person attacked by by multiple other people but this is this is not how i want to do this i i want to guide the <clears throat> the 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 readers the beholders eye over the picture and yeah. i i want to make this a b c count but then i want them also to go back to c so I want them, I want to tr have them go into the depth, into the middle of the picture, and then I want to trap them there yeah. and have them circle around. What I don't want is have them only circle around, but never stop anywhere. Yeah. Um, that's, those are these overview shots that you sometimes also need for an establishing shot because you just so show an empty parking lot and then your eye darts around and you're like, okay, there's a, there's a garage there, there's a car there, there's an old car there, there's a rotten bicycle there or whatever, you know, like, but there's nothing in the middle. So, okay, what's going on here? That's a different message that no, not what I'm doing. So what I'm trying is I will, I will have one character and place him off center a little bit yeah. in that character. I, I'm not sure, I, I'm, I'm sh I already know what, he's, what I want him to do. And what I want him to do is to shoot a gun. Because shooting a gun is super simple and I'm here to have fun. And, um, and war and conflict is always the easiest way to create conflict and to show conflict and emotion. Um, because conflict triggers emotion and that is super duper simple. Um, you can have completely different uh, powerful pictures that are powerful for completely different reasons. Um, but I'm choosing the easy way now. I'm going with the with the comfort zone, which 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 is okay. So I'm I'm, I'm just doing the the basic sketch now, and uh, just drawing super super simple gun here. Already uh, put in like the you already see that the head vector, the facial vector, is different from the chest, right? Chest pointing in one direction, face pointing in the other direction, automatically makes it makes it uh, dynamic. 
kind of uh, the hand of God coming in here, you know, touching him. And then you have the, yeah. the twist Creation in the body Adam, yeah. um, of, of these things. So, so I want this. I definitely want to have this character in there. I'm not, not sure what he does there with, with his second hand there, but he's, he's, he's shooting, he's doing something. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to open another layer for that just because it's Photoshop, I want to be able to move stuff around. That is the. But there's a good line of action there, Klaus. In that, in that, it's going like that. You can tell that there's real, that 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 the planet would be putting forces on the body at that particular point. So you're seeing the motion coming through. Lovely with that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, there's there, there's this big action line in here that you yep. have in here, and then you have another action line in here, and then you have another yep. action line in here. And I have to see, like, I could, like, if I just um, open this, basically, if I open this up and move this arm, for example, up here, that would not be good because then you, you might have a big action line, but you also have this. And this yeah. twinning motion is not good for dynamic storytelling. No. It's like saying, like, hey, people, do this. I think that this is great. It's weird. <laughs> Good illustration. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like yeah. on a plane, right? It becomes yeah. a dance. Where, in that position where you have that sort of balance, it's a dance move. It's not It's not combative. <laughs> all, all of a sudden it is, yeah. So yeah. so I want now um, um, a, a long list of, of, of people um, that attack this, this, this man. So I will have to draw people from... From behind a little bit and it could be like zombies or cyber zombies or or just regular people that are going crazy for some reason or it could be vampires anything vicious and mean and and evil that's fun and fantasy i think that is that is something for me and um and we now already come to to the point where i'm like okay yeah i can, I can just reduplicate this and then I have a second one then I have a third one and those are already nicely arranged because they're not in a straight line. They're already like in a V shape and that makes yep. things interesting already. This is great. It's also not on the same, uh, on the same height as my main character, which also makes it automatically interesting. The problem though, is that they're all the same size and that, that doesn't make them interesting. So if I, if I copy paste it and, uh, and I, I will start scaling and playing with scale. Um, yep. I should be careful about indeed putting stuff, for example, in the corner. This is not good. Not have never have individual little elements in the corner. Um, don't bring in new stuff in in corner areas. So, um, so I think this this is this is already good. But I can actually play with it even more. Go go even stronger in the statements. The bigger I go with this character, the more real estate he will take away from me. So if you're drawing a zombie crowd and you're a comic book artist, that means you're on a timetable, right? Table, yeah. you, you have to rush through it. You draw a bigger head in the foreground because that will save you drawing five other zombies or five, five more attackers. <laughs> and um, so, so this is a, this is a smart way of lines. Do it. <laughs> Economy of lines. Economy of lines. Yeah, yeah, you don't. You only have that much time to communicate an idea. The idea here is not to show that you are the the the, the most diligent artist that uh, draws twenty five characters that are all very different and all that stuff. So that is not necessary. So this I can already see, like because I'm, I'm assuming that my my horizon line is is somewhere in here. Um, yeah. Could even could even be down here, and maybe it's even tilted which would go with the effect if I want to have that dynamicism in there and I want to have the idea of him being overwhelmed, it would be really smart to, to put that on a tilted horizon. And it would be also really smart to not have him be too high in the picture. Conan, we remember, was super high in the picture. He's strong. He shows his strength. Yep. Right? This is a character that is much higher than all the other character below. Yep. So he's he's more powerful than them. Yeah. Um, Michelle and Andreas uh, are asking, uh, can you please make it a toilet paper battle? <laughs> toilet paper battle. <laughs> and I noticed that uh, Andreas is from Cologne, mm, mm. Um, in Germany. My wife and I have a padlock on that bridge in Cologne. Oh my know? God! You're one of these people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we one of the people who added to the massive key mountain at the bottom of the river. <laughs> well, that 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 too. I think the bridge is getting getting heavy by now. Like, it's, uh... yeah, I think they have to cut back every now and then. But it's it's just such a thing. It, it is. We have got a little engraved one. It's a pink padlock. 
Oh, I will. Next time I walk by, I will. I will look for it. Um, uh, uh, it's on my Instagram. I photographed it. <laughs> <laughs> that is how the world is these days. It <laughs> is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, talking about the world, yeah, I, I can make him fight fight over toilet paper. That that will take away the serious aspect I had in mind for this, uh, but I think it's 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 hilarious. I maybe want, quirky uh, bits at the end. We could do yeah, it. maybe maybe yeah, yeah. We want to add the, like the gangster sunglasses, you know, like yeah, the, the, the coming from the side. Um, so let, let let's see what's 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 going on. What what I can do. So um, there are. Um, the good idea now is like we have we have size size differences so we have differentiation by size which is good makes the crowd more interesting um but we don't have real overlap yet right the both forms are really free and complete and just and just repeated and and what would be good if we were able to enable overlap um, yeah um, he's he's shooting his his shots um and and this might be his last bullet, actually. That that will be an interesting thing I thought about. Like, okay, uh, if I want to, do I want to give the character strength or no strengths? Do I want to give him like a machine gun? He's like firing and he's just oh, having fun shooting at all the zombies in this fantasy universe. Um, no, I think it would be more intense for the story purpose if that was his last shot. And if he notices that this is his last shot. So in terms of storytelling, we are approaching a zenith uh, a high point um, in the story, and then it will it will collapse from there. But we shouldn't go to the high point in the story. We should we should illustrate the point that is leading towards that the um, what do you call this? The the scales are tilted, right? The uh, the the luck in war uh, is is shifting. Oh, the balance and, of power. Yeah, the balance of power is is yeah. shifting against the character, and that yeah. is the. Imp in, that is the most interesting point. We always have to illustrate the most interesting point if we only have one picture, and this is one of those. This yeah. is not really one of those storyboarding pictures because in storyboarding you do things like even more in a sequence. This is more like a keyframe that illustrates maybe two or three shots in a movie. And just summarizes them. Yeah. So um, Let's 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 get into this. And this is already good. This is very clean. Um, the the, the armor is free. This is this is all good. Um, but but maybe I can I, I can I can do something more. I don't know how gruesome I can I can get in here. Yeah, but I had an idea for this, and I don't know if I'm good. Is it okay? Well, if, if we I had it on a slider, I'd take it to about seven. Seven. <laughs> okay, in terms of gruesome, it's okay. Seven. Yeah. So what about yeah. we we put something in here where uh, we have like a, a zombie face in the. Is that okay if if, if zombie gets shot with the last bullet, or is that too? Intense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, You're I not going to show any blood. So, yeah, I mean, let's let's. Um, it's let's a zombie made of sand. Okay, those are like yeah. fidgies. They are not real people because I cannot condone violence against people. I have never fired a gun in my life. Uh, not a real gun, um, and I have no interest in it for some reason. Um, but I love illustrating it. It's yeah. it's really interesting to to illustrate that stuff because it's it's so conflict laden. And now I can create more overlap. So he's about to touch the guy, and then he gets the the last bullet. Perfect. But I have to I have to make sure that like we don't have a, a weird tangent tangent here, or yeah, something yeah. like that. We don't want. You're very good with that. your tangencies. You are super observant. I I, I noticed them the last time we were talking about it. Um, um, yeah, you are really really good about that collision. Um, the yeah, these collisions are just happening. Like the moment you draw yeah. three characters on a page, boom, you have them. It's it's automatic. We all do it. The difference is I look out for it immediately. Yeah, exactly. You're and really you good at that. And you can yeah. you can make a checklist actually when you actually yeah. draw. And in my first drawing classes, like over ten years ago, I made a checklist for my students to go through, and I gave them a checklist on on a sheet of paper, and they could go like, okay, did I do tangents? Did I have focus? What is line weight doing? Uh, do I have all the values in there? Black, gray, yep. white. You know, how is it? And all that stuff. So um, yeah, those were the good times where I was really nice to my students and. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so this is this is already. I'm pleased good. to see that a few of my former students from uh, the period where I was teaching have actually done really really well. 
on you know I, I've got a couple of my former students who have done mm -hmm. brilliant things and I'm just it's the great thing about teaching people is you some if you see them doing well you know that you had a, at least a small part of that journey yes them, yes you know. we want to imagine that that we did and I think we, we very likely did hopefully for the for the best of it and for the good of it um and that is that is a rising tide lifts all there's no there's no secrets to this stuff um, that, that we have to keep for ourselves because other people, we have discovered it maybe on our own, maybe with some teacher, um, maybe with a book, um, but um, it's, it's not really a big trade secret or, or anything like that. So, um, let me see. This is, my, this is my main character here. And he goes like, oh, this is, this, is, this is bad. It's bad. The bad part is that his gun is now shot through like the sledge. The, what do you call that? The... It's part of the gun. Uh, that, that's the, uh, well, you've got the barrel there and the slide. So the slide is the bit that goes backwards and forwards. Yeah, the slide is the now barrel. back. Yeah, so that means it's empty. Absolutely. It, it is It is empty. You can actually, it would, you would be yep. able to see it here somewhere that it is empty. Yep. And this is maybe, this is maybe even smoking. We're going to show it after the fact. We can also show it the moment it actually shoots. And that is yep. a decision we can take la later on when we take lighting into account. Mm -hmm. So we have we have three characters so far. That's not bad. Maybe we want to do like a five and six and uh, allude to a little bit more. Uh, let's see well, what we can do there. Um, I just want to um, I just want to address something in the chat from from Salome uh, saying so wonderful to hear actual teachers say that. Most of our college professors would just get insecure if any of us uh, did a little too well. Well, I'll tell you what, Salome, that says a lot more about them. Yeah, then then it does. They've got a lot more room for improvement, perhaps, than you should always. If you're an educator, I think what you're always trying to do is get people to go on from where you actually are, and that's the best thing you can ever have as an educator is when people surpass what you've what you've done. I think it's a good thing. Uh, no, uh, no doubt, Ab absolutely, okay. s s so correct. Um, and uh, and you should also commend them for it, right? You should tell them, hey, well done. This is so amazing to see you yeah. succeed. Um, it, 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 uh, and the thing is like, if you're an illustrator, especially in this art thing, and if you're, you're, uh, uh, teaching too, you're going to meet the, you, you cannot be condescending to these people who don't know yet, who are yeah. young and they don't, they're inexperienced. You cannot be condescending because you know what, five years down the road, you're going to meet them again and they're going to be professionals <laughs> and they're going to be great. Um, and, and then you'd be like, oh shit, I was really mean to that student. I was always like egging him on about drawing hands and stuff. And you're like, oh my God. And they, they could just hope that they will forgive you. The first, the, fir the, uh, the first place I actually taught at was the city of Bath College in, in Bath in Somerset. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, and their handbook had something that has never left me in it. So, you know, you get a new job, you read through the handbook. And their handbook had a quote. I can't remember. Unfortunately, can't remember who the quote was from. But it said, "It uh, it is not your honour to be taught by me. It is my honour to be part of your journey." And that has never left me. I'm so grateful. I read that particular page because I've always, I personally, I've always tried to stick to that. It's a good thing. Okay, I had, a, I had an idea now to to when I drew in this 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 character down here because I, I'm doing yeah. the, the the trick now again with like having this mass this wave of of uh, undead or whatever it is like attacking this this character here, um, and I was like, okay, how how do I free him a little bit more and how do I make not only the because we we talked about we saw all those characters fighting for example, and then you have these scenes where the hand goes past the face and oh, you get a get struck in the face. Um, so um, it's always nice if the characters also interact physically, if they hold each other's hands or push each other to the side. Characters need to interact with, the, with each other and the environment. That is always the most complete uh, illusion of reality and life yeah. um, that you could create. So I want my character, for example, to, uh, to go back into a house. He's, he's fighting back. He's, uh... and I have to, I have to look into this, how, how this might work. You know, maybe the door is actually a little bit bigger than, than him in there. And now I can, I can see, just, oh, maybe this should be like, just angled a little bit stronger. Mm. So I have more of this Dutch angle going on. So I don't have perfect, 
perfect lines and then it becomes more more interesting so we have an an open door here for example the door has been opened to the to the inside already and um and I'm, I'm creating some some distance in here and creating some this is just like still the compositional sketch of it so there's not um it's not much that i really care about because i'm gonna put all this together in a moment and then i'll just draw over it and draw draw the anatomy and everything else like right 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 into the thing and i should turn off my uh my communicator here can you can you stop the um i don't know why i got this uh the transmission thank you very much um i'm like i shouldn't be getting any updates here how is this how is this working i should, I should turn this off um windows oh sorry <laughs> uh, pause notifications for two hours so now i should no longer get any new notifications um from slack give me a moment to to blow my nose and then i'm good again yeah don't worry we're all good we're all good well the chat is busy today it's great to see you all chatting i'm glad so many of you like that quote and honestly it really it it has stuck with me the whole time in any situation i've been where i've been um sharing knowledge which is really useful um and is it i'm sorry that some of you had such bad experience with teachers but you know they're not all like that so yes and you, you, gareth hanks is yeah. absolutely on fire today with his look he makes, he's making lots and lots of amusing little quips in the uh in the chat uh, his latest one being about oh, zombies not socially distancing none of them wearing masks <laughs> Yes, bad. It's bad. Yes. It's not good. I've forgotten about the prime function of a zombie, though, uh, Gareth, to be perfectly honest. It's not to give you a massage. Or <laughs> yeah, so this is actually, this This might be, he might actually be being, being on, uh, I don't draw this in right now, but he's like slightly elevated, which is good to make him pop out from the from the. Yeah, crew, like climbing a step into that doorway, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, there step. are a few yeah. steps maybe here, but we can't see them. Um, yeah but he's also falling backwards and he's holding himself here with this thing so this goes into the back and this comes to the front so he can just like hold himself here and brace himself against this this thing there and there's an open 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 doorway in 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 some way behind him which is also cool because it gives us a rectangular shape this is something we haven't had yet in this illustration we only had amorphous shapes and now we're going to introduce a, a geometric shape into the system um, which automatically makes it pop out yeah. And it would be the same thing the other way around. Um, but this is a, a great trick to create more focus and to have variation in, in shapes. And when you hear concept artists talk among each, each other, they will always go, like, oh, the shapiness, oh, the sweet shapes I see in there, because that's what they're all about. They just love them shapes. Okie dokie. So let me... I think this is enough already. This is this is already good. There, there might yeah. still be more that, that I will need, but let's see if I have the time for that because that is always a problematic thing. Like if I already sold the idea um, doing what I do here, um, then I'm good. Um, everything else is icing on the cake. Let's keep it. Let's keep it with the basics. So I'm taking the opacity of this one here, just boom, moving it down. I'm going to start drawing. Um, Gonna start drawing with those things that are that are most important, and that is that is now tricky. So, do I start with the biggest thing to draw? Theoretically, yes, you would do that. Biggest face, that's the the least challenge, the easiest to draw. That is that is good, but that is not the most important thing actually. And also, um, we not only have to group groups against individuals, but we also have to group values, and we also have to group. Uh, details and we also have to group color and we have to group shapes and shapiness uh, for example i could make all my attackers be be very angular because there are i don't know science fiction beings and they're just beamed mm -hmm. down there and holographic uh creations that are all very low poly and my main character is high poly and very fluent and soft in shapes so i, I can make this happen as well Mm. Um, and I'm now deciding where my details go. And my details go into my middle plane. My, my details will not go into my foreground plane. Yeah. So I should keep all my detail work in here. Otherwise, it will... Um, um, 
it will be like an Otherwise, infinity focus level in, in which every like you said earlier everything is important and there's no, without depth of field you know then like you said nothing is important particularly yeah so. and i'm gonna make my my zombies i'm probably gonna make them naked male and naked dudes just simply like they have lost all clothes yeah. if they, they've gone crazy ripped off the clothes so i can just make some semblance of clothes if i want to and i'll make my main character different by giving him clothes yeah. And by giving him different clothes that that they don't they don't fit into this. But let's start with the face. Yep. Stuart's asking: At what stage do you start thinking about the light source or light sources? With I, I have more actually, of a rendering. I have already thought about it actually. Oh, so okay. I've already made some. I have some ideas about this stuff. Um, but it it when you have done this a few times, everything will come at the same time, right? You have an idea for a scene. You have it's a great question though. Uh, you have an idea for a scene, then you have an idea for a smell, you have an idea for an action, a sound, you have an idea for, for a cloth uh, that, that somebody's wearing, for example, clothes, um, and all those things. And uh, um, it's, it's later on, you will get more efficient with this because what would happen, what would have happened like 10, 15 years ago, I would have drawn all the, all the details on, on this character and I would draw on the back of his head and the hair and the neck hair and all those things I would, would have figured out all the muscles in his neck and all those things because I need to show that I can draw those. Uh, as a beginner, you have to show that, right? In your portfolio, you want to show that you can tackle anatomy if you're a comic artist especially and you want to be able to show that you can do the detail, um, but it's not smart. Because later on, I would create a, a maybe a super light source here and then everything down here will be dark. And, and then I've just drawn this in vain. It just doesn't do anything. That actually makes the picture harder to read. So that is that is not really um, that is not really good. Um, Angus is actually asking in the chat. Uh, you that he appreciates you're doing a single image at the moment, but do you apply this same approach to a group of images on a page? I'm, I was just about to answer and say my guess is that you would just treat each one as as its own image right or um i'm not sure i understand the question i think he's I th i'm not sure uh, and maybe angus you can clarify in the chat but i think he's thinking more in the terms of of frames and a comic book page for example if you were linking things together but i mean i know that's not really your gig is it it's not i mean like i've i've done comic books in the past yeah. um i would love to talk no, I remember about seeing, yeah. storytelling and yeah. in for for comic books if that is ever a topic with adobe live i'm game i'm your man yeah. um and it's because there's so much you can you can do to to enhance your storytelling there that will excuse me that will help yeah. with 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 doing this and now i have a little bit problem seeing my own brush but here we go I can now actually like go like ah he he he's not happy about this stuff right so so his mouth is like ah, extending a little bit and I'm like like putting some uh, some folds in there some wrinkles into his into his into his face and we're gonna see part of his teeth come out there and I'm out, I'm now always looking uh, away from um, from my uh, from my from my drawing there and. Uh, I'm seeing, for example, that the nostril will, will get, I can get in a little bit closer here, just to make it simpler for me. Just zoom in, make it simpler, but do not keep zoomed in on the details. It's, uh, it's much better to, um, to, uh, to, to keep zoomed out so you get a good overview over the picture. And this is something that natural illustration automatically does for you. You have to zoom with your head. You have to go in and out. Um, this here um, is now something uh, I'm seeing like, okay, this goes a little bit closer here. and uh, I'm seeing that, that, that how the, how the, how the, how the muscles here are a little bit um, tweaked to the side when I do this face and where yeah. I, would I do this, what, what I can do here and we'll stop doing it now, but it's just like good education is do this. That's what I do too. <laughs> Take, I've got a take a mirror one. is like yeah. one from yeah. the, the big house from Sweden that that sells yeah. uh, all that stuff. So it's <laughs> super cheap. Uh, all the animators have that. Any any company I've been at, the animators have that on their table. They all yeah. have that because we need facial reference. Especially a friend of mine, Joaquin. Hey, how are you doing? He had a, he had that on. He, he was doing facial animation for a game I worked on uh, for the game I worked on, and um, and he had the mirror there as well because you want to see like okay how is the wrinkling actually taking place have i have i taken everything into in, in, into account for example 
and in, in, in here it's 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 especially dramatic because uh, we could make this guy just be a cool guy, you know, just like aha, I'm smiling, this is cool. I, I just give him the facial expression of like I'm liking this, da -da -da, you know, and, and, and shooting and uh, hitting all those targets and stuff. But no, I don't want this. I don't want this. I, I want to make this more emotional. So I I want to I want to show the moment that he he real is realizing that he's he's actually out of ammunition. He he's just realizing this in that moment. Like this was his last bullet, and the guys are really coming close. And and that that is why I'm. He's, he's crunching his nose. He's like, Ugh, this this is this is this is bad. This is bad. This is not going to work out well. <laughs> <laughs> we are not going to survive this. To quote uh, C-3PO, uh, there. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> yeah, he has a bad feeling about this, and rightly so. I'm really sorry. Um, yeah. And uh, I will I will figure out now. In, while developing this illustration, I'm also developing the story and story parts of it. So if yeah. you have a production going on from this illustration, you might um, you might gather some 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 story points that that are that are that are interesting for you. Um, uh, so this is like okay, this is not really this is not really gonna be this is not gonna be good. And maybe there are even some some folds on his on his forehead because they're on my forehead as well. When I do a face like this, oh, it's just not good. Um, and I could I could give him a beard now or something, but I'm gonna I'm gonna not do this right now. So so this is already not bad. I'm I'm avoiding the strong shadows here. I'm gonna give him a, the forehead is now gigantic. If I actually do this this way, which I will not. Um, so I will I'll I'll do this. And bring it back. I can also just flip it horizontally to see, like, okay, how's this going? This is the great trick in Photoshop. Always flip horizontally. This is uh, yeah. in real media. You have to hold it against the window and yeah. <laughs> see through the page to get this. Best thing. Turn it upside down is another way of looking at a composition. But anything that makes you re reanalyze it is, is a good thing. Yep. Yep. I'll tell you what I have in here that I might just go over and fetch it in a minute. I have a couple of planar heads in here planar, that I use oh, for lighting. Oh. Hang on, I'm going to go and get one. Hold on. It's well, just yeah, over I'll, there. I'll, I'll be here. I'll be just drawing things. There's nothing well, I should still hear you talk to you all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't feel lost. It's uh, I'm having a good time here. I know. I managed to pick these up from 3D Total. Oh, nice. And these are super useful. So I set it up in a little box and then I put um, uh, I put light in, so it's just a torch basically, uh, and light that up from the direction I want the light and then work from there. It's a great way to work it out. And of course it brings all the surfaces down, makes them nice and easy to work with. They're really cool. Absolutely. Um, can, I can recommend this and just like doing studies from this to understand yeah. the, the shapes of the, the human um, head is, is, is really good. I'm giving this guy now a button shirt because I like button shirts, but also because I want to make him different. And I want to, I want to tell a story with this picture. So um, I could just like give him like a general, like uh, do a shirt, give him a holster from a police, you know, make him a policeman, make, make, uh, make him a normal person. Um, but uh, just with the, with the sweater or anything like this, but um, I, I wanted to do some, something different here. So um, what I think is cool would be if he was wearing a suit. Why not make this a hedge funds manager? Or uh, hedge funds manager. <laughs> right? Oh yeah, you've got a bit of get a bit of a tie curving over uh, that left shoulder. Yeah. Love it. You yeah, that dynamic would would work really well. <laughs> Love it. And we with with this with these edges, I can enhance this dynamicism I have here. Right? Yeah. Like if if this was going this way, that wouldn't help. Yeah, because so then can... you've got an echo. If you've got a shape going that way, you've got a nice echo in there as well. I have an echo? What? No, no, not with your microphone. I mean in the image. Oh, if you've yes. got that action line flowing that way and you've got something that's rolling against it, you've got an echo in the in there. A, a motion echo. Uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. This is um this is thank you so much for for playing this with me. This is so helpful. Like exactly when when we talk about like rhythm of of elements, this is echoing shapes you already already have in there. Um, and this is something that you just you just want to have that you just want to do that. So uh, let's let's give him a, a jacket here. And we can actually put a 
pocket square in there. Sure, no problem. And now, for example, we have to see that um, this, is, uh, this is now drapery 101. Um, my drapery here might not be might not be correct um, because I'm I'm just winging it. I'm just trying to, and I'm getting phone calls. Oh, this is really interesting. No, I'm not taking that. Um, pro, pro tip here: always mute your phone. Um, wow, I'm um, I'm making all the mistakes today. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all fun. It's you know, it's all natural. Yes. Um, so this should be on, on flight mode now. This is awesome. Um, good. So 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 little 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 tip here on drapery, right? If if you draw his 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 hand here, and he's he's holding the the gun. This is his thumb. Base of that. Um, we put the finger in there. Normally the picture would be out. The, the finger would be outstretched because of like safety and security. Yeah. Handling handling weapons. But he just made the shot. So he just actually pulled the trigger. He, we're in that moment. And we're gonna see his uh, his fingernails there um, because that is the fingernails are here. This is that part of the gun, and uh, and here comes the small, the pinky. I mean, like he could also extend the pinky. No, we could, you know, do, do the little pinky like this. It'd be really cool, uh, but not for him because why not? It wouldn't fit the story. Yeah. Because he's now panicking, so he's no longer doing the elegant. He's not doing the I'm holding the gun uh, the weird way, like gangsters do it. Um, I'm uh, he he's in a panic, so he's he's gripping the gun really uh, with a lot of lot of in, in intensity in in there. So a couple of people, there's a small discussion going on at that moment with um, people asking why you would work in Photoshop and saying about it being bitmap. It's, it's a difficult call. I mean, if you want to plan something out right and draw it and then turn it into vectors that's one thing but photoshop is much more immediately expressive for for the kind of work that that klaus is doing here it'd be a different ball game to do this in a vector you'd still need to go through this process anyway to draw if you were going to you wouldn't plot this as a vector yeah so if, if i draw the hand here uh something that people do is like they, they, they give him a suit and that is really cool and then they they, they, they draw a little bit of cufflinks here and they draw the, the edge of the suit here. And this is nice. And it looks on first, first idea, this looks good. This looks okay. Yeah, it's actually not um, because it doesn't help the realism. We have to take every measure, every, uh, every possibility to add realism to this piece. Uh, we have to take, and that is something that, that I don't know if I explained this last time, but I explained this to some, in some drawing class recently. So if you have a, you have cufflinks, right? And this is your arm. If, if if you actually extend your arm, you see how it shrinks back. You see, like this distance yeah. of my hand becomes visible because it, it doesn't automatically grow with the thing. This is not yeah. real. This is real. Um, yeah. So so when I lay my hand low, then it would be there. This way, it will not, and it will give this entire picture, this composition, another another important element of of urgency. If if I put this in there. I mean, at the very least, right, most of us have got a mirror. What we could do, if you're trying out a pose and you want to see the actions of of drape and everything and uh, and on, try and emulate the pose because that will show you, you should be able to make a mental snapshot of that and just hold the pose, look at yourself in the mirror and think, all right, okay, so my sleeve here is actually holding up at this particular point and so on. So that, you know, but the... It's great that you you have these observations down the pat, of course, Klaus, because you're a you know because you're you are a pro at doing this. But for people who are learning, that's a good way to do it. Observe it. No doubt, yeah. Make reference your preference. <laughs> nice catch line. Come yeah, on, that T-shirt. <laughs> well, let's get I some don't... of those done for when we go to Angoulême. <laughs> we, we we probably should make reference your preference. Sponsored by Adobe Stop. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I think I learned this from a from a from a book like 15 years, 20 years ago. There was something like this. I was like, mm, yeah, interesting. So, um, so the the cufflinks from his shirt show there, and his his suit is going is go, is going back there, and we see his Rolex. So that's already storytelling going on there in terms of like urgency, like this is going back, and also showing his his watch now, his, his use of objects. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, so that comes in non-verbal communication 
Yeah. So we're gonna open up here now his 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 jacket a little bit. And this is just a sketch, right? I'm using the excuse yeah. now why this isn't fully rendered. Um, this is a sketch means like I'm exploring stuff and I'm gonna gonna drop things and I'm gonna work fast and uh, um, because this will enable me to explore all the possibilities that this this image might might provide for me. But you, you can see he's like a, he's like a slick uh, pimp or hedge funds manager or any, any other sort of criminal um, um, that that he uh, <laughs> that that runs around like nice clothes and has a gun with him. Yep. And uh, as hedge funds managers probably do. Yeah, well, they have people. Oh, I know who this guy is now. You have an yeah, idea? This guy, all of those other zombies, they're people who, who they're GameStop investors. <laughs> <laughs> We're being super topical, and in 10 years, everybody oh, will be yeah. like, what is what, what is happening there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. Apparently, that was something that was that was on my mind uh, when I when I selected to to, to draw this. We shouldn't joke about it, really, because, you know, that whole situation is affecting real people, some of whom own multiple boats. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they have to cut back on, the, on, the, on their second yeah. or third jet. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. You know, Dif difficult, difficult. Let's life. feel their pain for a moment. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Yeah, this is a total professional session today yeah. here with, uh, with Tony and me. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a picture of me looking like I care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. I hope you guys in the chat are feeling this too. Um, yeah, no, no, it's, it, yeah, it's coming across. It's all good. Okay, fine. How are we doing on time? Well, we've only got about nine minutes left, Klaus. We're doing... what? Are you kidding me? No, no, we have, we have, we have one and a half hours, don't. right? Yeah, we do, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm in a different world. No, wait, it, but it's, no. it's, it's 2.20 already. It is. It, is it 2.20? So I have till 2.30 only? Oh yeah. my God, I need to it's watch right. this It's now. all good. We're chatting, drawing, people are enjoying it. I'm having too much fun here. Oh. Maybe yeah. 2.40. So we maybe. can stretch to 2.40. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Worry not. Let's and uh, Yana has correctly pointed out, I have read up on the memes indeed. I was, uh, my producer in the US for, for my other job was... Uh, was putting these things in front of me and I picked up on that one and thought that's so so good. <laughs> so let's let's get cracking here literally. Like if you have drawn a, a few guns in your in your life you will know how to, how the proportions are and what the parts are of certain guns. I'm not a gun nut. I'm not a gun enthusiast as you know. Uh, I'm not a gun I'm nut, just... but I've fired enough of them to to, to know them well enough. In fact, one of the things that annoys my, well, I don't know if it annoys her as such, because she's a former police officer, but the um, whenever we're watching like a crime drama or something, and I see there was a discarded weapon in something we were watching here the other night, and I went, Glock. <laughs> it's just, oh. I know what these things are, <laughs> you know, up to a point. I mean, I don't, you know, or MP5K or, you know. Oh, yes. Heckler Koch. Uh. It is a Heckler and Koch. Well done. Yes, yeah, the HK yeah, MP5, yeah. Yeah, it's, um... yeah, yeah, and the MP5K is the personal one, the one that goes in a jacket, so there you are. Ooh, uh, I should have probably given him something like this then, but I, 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 do I dodged the opportunity, I missed the opportunity. So, um, doing this here, um, uh, so let me, let me, let me continue. So he's, he's grabbing the wall here. But I also want to do, uh, I want to just quickly draw the belt here, give him a really nice expensive belt buckle and then uh, throw in a dark belt to just so we see his hip line, really important to see the, the diagonal hip line, right? Like have a shoulder line, have a hip line that is not parallel ideally and have the yep. chest going one direction, face one direction and then have the hip go forward. And, and now I'm, I'm just drawing some drapery here, making that up as I, as I, as I go along and draw, drawing some pants here that just fly there. And we have the, talking about the flies here, we have a pocket there, we have a line there. So knowing like the minimalistic stuff about fashion design is actually essential. You don't need to know all of it, but you should need, you should, you should know some of it yeah. and enough of it to to simulate it for the uninitiated. Yeah. 
Oliver Andrews in the chat is saying he likes pointing out when people would have been injured by the way they're holding their own gun in films. True. And that's that's the thing where you get people who hold a pistol rather than that, which is the correct way to hold a pistol. They hold it like that. And they've obviously never met the hammer coming back from <laughs> into the hand. Not that that ever happened to me. It did actually once, but <laughs> my first time I ever fired a pistol, but there you go. Boom. So now we have like, we got the moment here. We got the recoil. He shot this direction. We got a recoil going on. We got the um, the bullet flying out of it. That is awesome. Now I should actually go into this and 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 draw in a couple of, of the attackers too. And I will... Um, I'm assuming I, st I will not have enough time to finish to finish all this all this stuff here, but I'm um, I'm trying this. Let's let's make a nice zombies. What I'm just wondering is for the people who 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 aren't quite understanding um, the grey background thing that we we know so well. Could you could you give an indication of some light direction with with some white in there so people understand the the, the contrast of the thing? Um. Yes, I can. I can do this. Or would in a that second. interrupt your flow? I mean, if it interrupts you, don't don't worry. Um, um, it, uh, it. We will come to that in like one minute. I'm just gonna try and do something that is actually good for this piece. I'm gonna I'm gonna simplify it, um, and that also means I can really quickly move to the interesting part of creating a value scheme and lighting for for this thing. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna gonna simplify by just putting all of these these characters here into. Um, actually just copy paste this oh yana's just revealed the fact that it was an in, in joke between uh between you and and them so the gray background that's good i use them yeah it, it just it just means that if i if i do a highlight boom it automatically works yeah, it pops it straight creates attention absolutely immediately So I'm a detail freak, so I always love edit, editing details. But the, uh, if you add details, the, Rabbit the, the, place, <laughs> the place where you add them is is yeah. super relevant for um, for your for your storytelling. Uh, and uh, the the best way is to do it is adding it at the terminator. That means where the light changes into the dark side of an object of the shadow. Uh, that edge of the shadow is where you put most of your details because it will give you all the information about um, about that stuff. But that is something, and, and I would love to talk about just values uh, in a in another session. I will do this in the future at some point. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure of it about value composition for storytelling, and. Uh, and make it an issue maybe to actually take a line drawing and then just do the values for it live render, on, yeah. on television and render it instead yeah. of making that, making this, this thing happen. Have you seen the color constructor application? Have you seen that? Um, no. I so uh, uh, Julia Ziga, uh, another one of the German hosts and a good friend of mine, she hooked me up with the color constructor. It's really interesting. You can create value maps inside it. It's really, really interesting. Cool app. I'm not very, I think it's about $8 or something like that. So I'm just gonna do, just gonna do the bare minimum on those characters. And it, it, the fun thing is that it will actually, it will actually help us. I will actually pull this arm back so we have a nice silhouette read on on this stuff. Mm. Um, I don't need to draw the hand in there because uh, he's he's just trying to bite that person, maybe for example. And and now I can see if I can already um, let me see if this is all nicely drawn shot. So I'm gonna do it like a like a real comic book book artist would would do that thing. Uh, just select it. Shift Command I inverse. Uh, oopsie, this doesn't work. So there was something that was not drawn 
drawn completely closed. Now it is, now it should work. Click in it and it's, we have the negative space, fantastic. So I'm gonna throw a layer under this and make it, oopsie, dark gray. I need a darker gray actually for this. Come on, doesn't work. Darker gray, please, hello, select, please. Doesn't select, How? why doesn't it select the darker? I don't get this. Okay. There we go. Okay, now it does, now it's too dark. <laughs> <laughs> that is weird. And now it has color in there as well. I didn't want the color in there. I did not. This is okay. Now we're talking. Yep. Yeah. This is actually what I wanted. Took me three steps, but it worked. So those two guys are these, this guy here. This is in the front. So this is even more in the front. So I will shift command invert. I will actually make this dude super dark. And this will immediately help help the depth read of the picture. It would also help if I if I did like stronger outlines. You see, his outlines are the smallest, and those are getting bigger. Now I'm gonna not draw this uh, this one character that is blowing away there, for example. I'm just gonna stop this because I don't want I don't, I don't need it right now because I wanna wanna just make the main main points about this illustration in 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 this sketch. So we have our main character here. So, so what I'm drawing in there is this, for example, this door, door frame. Boom, 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 boom. And then in the background, for example, I could continue those rectangular shapes and, uh, and just put posters on the wall. Why do I put posters on the wall? A, to repeat the rectangular shape, which makes the entire picture uh, have a nice rhythm. Uh, and, 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 and also because I'm lazy, because then I don't have to draw bricks. <laughs> so I can, I can let's, let's like, Good show. Just, uh, just, just draw a couple bricks in here. And then we have, we have communicated that this is the brick wall. It's nice. I hate indicating bricks. Um, and, if you just do it in a smart way, that will that will perfectly work for this because I haven't yeah. brought in lighting now in here, but I'm gonna do this right now. Boom! And this is this is gonna be this is gonna be my light layer. I make it green. So let's go with the with the gradient and let's light this baby up. So, um, for example, I could make this entire thing darker here, yep. and have have light come from the top section here. So it might be a scene, it's like a back alley. And what I'm doing now is the, the biggest, the nicest trick of all that is I'm creating, going all in now because I only have five minutes left. And this is this is something that is really important to me because I'm, I'm using what I learned from Gary Gianni in the, in, in the first instance. And I'm putting in a dark background here. Yeah, because when I when I look into the illustration by Gary, we see this here, like the black he put in here. This is the only yeah. real solid black, and we have a black window there too against the edge of the blade that creates a lot of focus and a lot of interest in this character. And I can do this too. Yeah. I can just steal like an artist. So, I'm, so I'm, I'm doing this and I might have, I'm doing this really quickly and dirty now. Now I'm doing the highlights. Have the light come from above, for example. And so immediately have this part. We have some light on his, the light is coming from above on shining yeah. on him there because there's a street lamp or something like this. And we have put that on his face as well. Steve is saying I could watch Klaus draw and teach all day. There you go. Thank you. It's and uh, Christine is saying I've learned a lot today. Thank you very much. When will it be continued? Oh, at some point. Yeah, that will be that will be fun. So I'm um, just doing a little bit careful now with the with this shirt here. For example, that's a light shirt, uh, yep. but lighting has is so complex, right? A, a white shirt in the shadow might be much darker than the shadow on a light side and on another yeah. object. 
Um, so let's make this come to the front a little bit more. I normally would draw a pattern in here, like to just like show like this is a really snazzy suit. So it has a really nice pattern, for example, and this stuff. Um, and now what I've done is like I've easily communicated what's going on in the picture and given it given it some depth, there's still a lot missing. Um, but the, the read is really easy. It goes, there's a crew of people that are attacking him. He has a highlight on the gun and the eye is leading us towards his facial expression. So yeah. we have the biggest highlight definitely here on the gun. It could also be the muzzle, right? It could also be that he's still shooting this. Yeah. Um, that That's a possibility too. To, create a lot of effect on that, but then it will be, it will have a lot of um, focus on this stuff. Yep. And now if I, so I have a, I have a one read, right? And this goes against this character. We know these characters look in this direction. There are very little detail on them. So we immediately go back to the gun and go back to, to this main character in his face. And now my question is in terms of story and before wrapping up um, is how can I make this even worse for the character? And how can I bring another storytelling element in there? Um, and then this could happen. I could go in there. And people are enjoying this, man. It's good. And just drawing another character coming from the coming from the inside and grabbing him from the back. I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> I knew, so, I knew, I knew. I had a sense. Excellent. Great minds think alike. Yep. So I'm just have to take this guy back a couple notches. Do you, can you still see him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So that means we have a we have a read of of one, we have a read of two, and then we have three here. Yeah, um, surprise element, yeah. And, and and that will will make the entire thing uh, be interesting for a longer while because you're still discovering things. And yeah. just like a storyteller is hiding details and omitting things that later become surprising and interesting and make the story better and guiding us one, two, three, A, B, C through the entire process, this is what we're doing here with the illustration as well. Go from the big message, the shooting, to his facial expression, to, oh my God, I'm just seeing, I know more than him, he's gonna be surprised in the end. And that's good story. Uh, it's fantastic, it's a really good story and it was working really well. Mate, I can't thank you enough for, for joining and sharing this stuff with us, cheers. And, uh, and for everybody that's joined and, and chipped in today, I'm glad you've all enjoyed it. And of course, don't forget, if you wanna carry on chatting, you can here on our own Discord and the link is coming in right there right now so there we are super good do do that klaus i i hope it's not too long before you're back with us again for you know for another of these sessions if you're up for that it'd be fantastic and uh, everybody will would be. love it thank oh, you no, so absolutely. much this man. is great fun for me i just wish i had another hour here to finish the drawing but i think the major points came over drawing well, crowds I think we could do an fun. afternoon right we could do we could do one of those i think, <laughs> I think we could work <laughs> Yeah, after, uh, maybe I have to get a, a Twitch stream at some point. Yeah, uh, actually, point. no, we couldn't do an afternoon, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's keep it, keep it, keep it short and, and and to the point. I hope I made a couple points today. It was fun. Yeah, no, fantastic. Thank you very much, and thanks everybody for joining us. Don't forget, uh, we're here for the masterclasses every Wednesday, and we're back with Natalie on Friday. Mwah, Natalie, and to everybody there, stay safe. Stay happy and uh, what? So something in my ear just then. What was that? What was that? Ah, oh, it's Emma and Veronica. Oh yes, of course it is. It's Emma and Veronica on Friday. But anyway, there's the program just there. Of course, I forgot about that. Working from home. All right. Thanks everybody. See you soon. Take care now. Bye. Soon. Goodbye, England and the world. <laughs>